Okay, so I thought I'd do a follow-up video on the CADAS Edge 2. Uh, really, really powerful computer. This has got 16 gig of RAM. I've plugged it into my monitor, but just with a USB-C cable, you can see here, USB-C to C, and the only thing I've got going into it is power. Quite a minimal setup. You can have a look at the monitor, and there is nothing plugged in behind it. So if I switch it on, we'll see what happens. So we can see it's using 7.2 watts and it's starting up Android. It's actually powering the monitor. That's why it's using more power than usual. 10 watts, 9.3 watts. It's a lovely bright display. Small change uh, to the setup. So I'm now powering the monitor separately because I would find the monitor would occasionally turn itself off when it was trying to do too much. Uh, but now you can see all the touch is working. Uh, we can uh, basically access everything normal from Android and, and it works just as it should. So if I start Genshin Impact, there is sound from here as well. Uh, I'm just going to see if the volume is turned down low. Is there not a sound setting in here somewhere? Uh, here we go. Sound volume, media volume. Let's, let's give that something extra and let's go back into the game. I can do it by the multitasking bit here. It's a lovely fast tablet. Uh, in this sort of mode. So let's launch that. I haven't played this, but it looks like it doesn't work with a controller. It only works with touch. So I guess, what do I move it? Oh yeah, move it. Oh, yeah, so it's lovely and responsive, look. It does look great. I don't know, is it controller? Oh yeah, controller here. Got the sword, jump. That's like a rush. Yeah, this looks amazing. Mobile phone games have come a long way. Let's go into the water and have a look. Yeah, the, the footsteps in the water. Look at the sun as well. That is, that's very impressive. So I had a question about how well this runs. Uh, now, obviously I haven't been in the heat of a battle or anything. Let's see if I can get near, oh, here we are. Here's something to fight. Seems to cope all right with that. So we try the rush thing. <laughs> I'm missing every time. Let's go with the sword. I think the sword is appropriate. Yeah, that is smart. I need to try that. I don't know how we get up there. I think there's flying in this game. Pretty sure I've seen it, but I guess it says you go further on. Yeah, very cool. Right, let's try something else. So if we swipe it from the bottom, we can go to the home. Uh, we've got GTA San Andreas here. I've been playing this with a controller. We also have the Play Store as well. Uh, so this build, that when I did my first video, uh, it was an early version of Android. This build is definitely better. So it's got the Google Play Store in it. Uh, it also has settings um, to do with the CADIS board itself. And this is a 14 inch Ymaxi display. I've used it with the Raspberry Pi before as a portable tablet. Uh, possibly could do the same with this. Yeah, here you go. I mean, it just looks really, really nice. Yeah, very nice. And now it's giving me different options. Right, so let's come back out of that. And we've got some dedicated CADA settings. So we can see CADA settings, LED control, cooling fan, and the timer. And we can, uh, so the fan is on automatic, hasn't come on yet. That's fan level one. And here's fan level three. You can hear much, much noisier. But on the automatic level, it keeps it nice and cool. So we've got Call of Duty here as well. Okay, looks like I'm part of a team. Where's that coming from? Oh, here we go. <laughs> to be fair, it's pretty smooth. You can see if I move it around, I can really fling it around and it's not struggling with it at all. Now I've got this display port working. I thought I'd try dual screen, which isn't gonna work with Android, but uh, I figured it might be pretty decent in Ubuntu. So I'm gonna basically get rid of this OS and replace it with Ubuntu, but really impressed with the Play Store, really impressed with how it works, uh, the multitasking, the speed of it. 
yeah really really great okay so i've booted back into the uwav store because i want to try dual display but with ubuntu i'm quite impressed that dual display works on this uwav store bit as well so let's go continue and let's go with the ubuntu with the desktop environment download and that automates and will boot back into ubuntu okay so this is ubuntu desktop with dual screen support and uh, as you can see i've got the top screen running firefox at the moment uh, i'm playing fifa which starts uh, in a few days but you get some early access and uh, the web app works great on it and this can be slow on devices but uh, flicking through all these uh, it does work really nicely uh, as does this page and it's playing videos all the time and things like that as well but let's close down firefox uh, let's call up youtube on here and we'll play uh, one of my videos so i've got a 4k video i can play on there so 4k hdr lee and i'll try and keep this in uh, real time just so that um i'll only cut out if i've got to put a password in but actually i'll keep the the service running so we'll skip past the advert so now and i can uh, well let's just go full screen and this will be in 4k so i'll turn on stats for nerds so if I right click stats for nerds now the machine is capable of up to 8k but this is within Linux and obviously to do with the graphics drivers and everything else so we are dropping some frames so 60 frames dropped 64 frames dropped. you can see it's a bit choppy um, but uh, I had a request to check 1080 and so if I switch to 1080 uh, you'll see that it plays 1080 absolutely fine and doesn't seem to drop frames at all which you'd expect on this level of hardware but um, but it's always nice to see it running uh, while that's running down the bottom let's open up say something like gparted so i've cut out the bit i had to put my password in uh, let's open up audacity and let's launch gimp as well which is a bit like photoshop and if we press the windows key you can see the various things starting up uh, and GIMP usually is quite a slow program to start up, so let's go straight into that one. Now this does crash, um, not because of the hardware, for some reason it crashes. Now I've got an images in pictures, uh, yeah, so all we have to do is restart GIMP and then pick the restore option. And as you can see, it, it restores really, really fast. Uh, and so with this image, if I was to go into filters and what have I got, artistic and let's go for cartoon and see how quick yeah very very quick uh, and if we go back and forth on that where's the back arrow undo cartoon and redo cartoon it is instant go into audacity uh, and let's import a file so import audio actually no i don't want to do that i want to do import or open uh, I haven't used this for a while. I used to use this all the time to fade out various different tracks. So if I wanted to add a fade out at the end of this, I can go generate and where is it? No, it's effect and fade out. And you can see it, it does it instantly. Whilst the video is running in the background, whilst GIMP is running, Gparted is launched as well. Uh, if we look for HTOP, uh, just to see how much RAM we're using, uh, we are using... 2.81 so the 16 gig even in this test hasn't even come close and I'm, I'm running a browser I'm running all sorts of things at the same time let's open up LibreOffice Impress and let's uh, just pick anything on here and open but it is as a desktop it, it just it works really really well I've been using it for a bit with the FIFA, uh, with installing a load of things, and it is very, very pleasant. So if we do insert image, and we go to, I need pictures from here. Well, this, this gives me a different, how am I gonna find that? I wonder if I can drag it. Can I, can I drag the image? So if I pick files and pictures, what happens if I drag that to there? Nothing. So I've got to put it in documents then to be able to have it. I mean, this is all, you know, real use. This is things that some people have to do from a work point of view. Still doesn't show up there. Home CADAS documents. Let's go with all files. Oh, okay, so it, <laughs> it doesn't read JPEGs. 
but it imports JPEGs absolutely fine. So you can see running really well. I'm really happy with it. I've left all this bit in real time. Um, I really like the dual display support, so I can drag down to the bottom screen here, uh, and I can go up to the top. I can I can minimize something and drag it between the two. You can see this touchscreen monitor is way better. Oh, I was going to see if the touchscreen was working. Yeah, so the touchscreen is working, although I think I need to tell it which which display is which. Yeah, because my mouse has gone a bit strange now. So if I go to the top here and go to settings and try uh, display, yeah, so I somehow need to make the primary display this one. And so is my mouse the wrong way around? No, my mouse is still all right now. So if I click on that, yeah, it does something does something strange. I need to play around with the settings on that because, uh, as you can see, it's not... Well, that also doesn't look like it's made that the primary display. So, single display, join displays, primary display. Oh, maybe I didn't... Um, I didn't apply it, look. So now, is this the wrong way around? No, that's all right. Oh, but I've got the icons down the bottom here. So we'll keep the changes and tap on that. So all apps, I've, for some reason I clicked on the trash then. Yeah, it does something It does something weird. Uh, it doesn't seem to, although that, no, it does It does something weird. I need to play around with the, the touchscreen element of this. Uh, worked fine in Android. Uh, I'm sure it can work fine in this, but I don't know how I've got to set it up for dual displays. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps. I hope you like it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.